Welcome to Leading Through Crisis, a conversation series exploring the idea of leadership in challenging times. Hi, and welcome to Leading Through Crisis. I'm Celine Williams, and I have the pleasure of speaking with Alan Samuel Cohen today. Alan is an executive and team coach, a TEDx speaker and author. He is an expert in emotional intelligence and the power of human connection. His TEDx talk, which is out now, is called The Magical Power of Shared Purpose. And in that talk, amongst other things, He speaks about his experience working on the Harry Potter book launch. So, Alan, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Celine. Thank you for having me. It is an absolute pleasure. And I actually would love to talk a little bit about shared purpose, um, your experience with it, and and why it matters so much in times of crisis or chaos or or where things feel more uncertain than usual. Yeah, I I feel like uh, it it was kind of divine, uh, divine intervention that it took six months for my TED talk to actually go live and it went live this week. Uh, it's like it's like the universe was saying, like, wait for the perfect time for this talk because it's what people need totally. to hear. And and so interestingly, the the the, the theme of the TED that uh, that I participated in was chaos and looking at all the different ways that we manage through chaos. And and I spoke specifically about the power of shared purpose to help us navigate through even the most turbulent times and uh, and used examples from from my life and from and from my clients and and uh, just kind of what I've seen in the world. And so I think that I think that when we can come together around something that is greater than any one of us, and when we have that conversation, when we are connected to that that sense of purpose, in, in a lot of ways, I feel that that the impossible becomes possible, mm. that the unimaginable becomes realized. And so and that that's what I feel is is needed now more than ever, because we are living in such a ridiculously difficult, unimaginable period in our lives. But when I, what I've seen and I live here in Manhattan, right in the heart of, of the pandemic and and some of the beautiful things that I've seen with communities coming together and being creative um, it has just elevated people's spirit mm-hmm. and optimism and was really helping our, our brains um, be, be calmer amidst something that just feels so out of control. We're not eradicating the virus right now, but, you know, in a lot of ways, mindset matters as much as science just to help us to get through it. So the examples that I used in my talk, and you, you referenced the Harry Potter experience. So, so over 20 years ago, I led the team, the publicity team that was responsible for launching the Harry Potter book. So we were the first, um, first people in North America to actually touch those books and, and, and bring them into the world. Um, hashtag no big deal, my, my <laughs> friend Eduardo always likes to say. Um, obviously a great book, and it didn't need all that much to to make it to make it the phenomenon that it was but but in truth the chaos that it, that that we experienced was doing something that was so vast um for the first time and 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 a, and we were a team that was not really that functional mm-hmm. and uh, and so the chaos was largely just the chaos that humans bring to a situation when they're a little bit out of their element mm-hmm. uh and the, our humanness that has us competing with each other and and sometimes being awful to one another. Um, but what we were able to accomplish was because we we were all moved by the books and by a common purpose, which was to get young kids to read um, great books of fiction, particularly boys who were not readers at the time. Um, in, in my talk, I also spoke about 9-11, and I live here just blocks away from the World Trade Center and, and, and seeing what happened the days after 9-11 with first responders, air traffic controllers, you know, bringing down all those planes safely and quickly. There was no handbook for how to do that, but, but it was like the sort of energetic force field and strong connection and communication that around something that was so important, which was to make us safe, um, that that they were successful. And I, I see this time and time and time. And I'm not talking about like my individual purpose. 
I, I, you know, it's we all have a reason why we're here, and and you know, or we're figuring that out as we go. But when when teams or communities can align around something that they all share, it it it, it has a kind of momentum mm. that that, as I said, makes the impossible possible and realized. So we need I, that now, Celine. We need it now. I I agree with you. I this. So I'm curious because I have seen, um, so with a lot of the conversations that I have had, people are struggling to align around the vision or purpose that they had prior to the pandemic, right? Because things are shifting and it feels uncertain, right? So saying that we're doing the same thing we were doing six months ago for these reasons feels um Oftentimes, I'm not I'm not saying always, but the, a lot of the conversations I've had, it doesn't feel right or appropriate or people aren't gathering around that purpose in the same way and leaders are struggling with that. So, you know, the question that comes up for me is how do you, how can people shift their purpose? How can they shift that vision now? Because it is more important than ever to have something to gather around, but it can be a struggle for people and teams to know uh, like what, how do I do that? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so I think that our purpose doesn't, doesn't change, but we, we may reprioritize or, uh, or, or pivot in, in a moment of crisis or, or chaos. And, and so, so I believe that our purpose is largely tied to also what our innate talents and, and gifts are. Um, that, that, those things don't change just because where we're putting our focus elsewhere. I am still great at X, Y, and Z. This is still my, my essence, if you will. So, so I, and I, I, this is a great conversation too, because I see, I see a lot of tone deafness out there in the marketplace where people are selling services without being mindful of what people are going through. So I think as leaders, what we need to do is look at how how what our core strengths are, what what this team does really well, what how how can we use that in service of what's really what the marketplace really needs right now, without being oil salesmany and disgusting, right? So you know what are the services that we can offer right now that are going to help people through a difficult time, and how can we bring the best of who we are? And, and the products and the services that we offer to address the, the most compelling needs. And sometimes that also means like if you're in a service business that you need to just kind of just, just wait it out a little bit. It might not be the best time to launch that, you know, that, that product or, or, or uh, it's like if we're, you know, and, and you spoke, so I'm, so I'm, uh, I do a lot of work around emotional intelligence and social responsibility is a, is a key aspect of emotional intelligence. And so how are we being socially responsible and responsive to what the market needs? Um, how can we, how can we become part of that greater, greater good and bring, bring our own set of skills to, into the mix? Um, I, I realize too, that people need to stay in business. And, uh, you know, and, and, but, but there are, um, I think that there are ways to stay in business while also, and, and express one's purpose while also uh, contributing to the greater good. And I think it, it sounds to me like um, in many cases, it's almost a, like a messaging shift rather than anything else. Right. So making sure that, that, uh, whatever language, whatever messaging you're putting out there is respectful and aware of the current situation so that people can align around that. Because if, if things haven't changed, if you're not acknowledging the reality of what many people are dealing with, they don't, there's no, there's nothing for them to align around. It doesn't feel right anymore. It doesn't feel right. appropriate. And I, like, I'm sort of talking a, on, in a team context, right? Rather than right. A right. personal context, but right. Right. Well, yeah. I, so, so my I've reframed it to say it's not about selling; it's about serving. Yeah. And um, and I also know that that I teams businesses we need to stay in business, yeah. right? So you know, so but but make sure that you're you're serving um, in a way that is actually useful to people right now. Which means that every single leader, every single team member, every single 
um, business needs to be on the phone, getting deeply curious about what people need. Yeah. And, and make sure that you're being responsive to that. Yeah. I think that's a really interesting point. Um, and, and so, uh, Todd Herman, who is an author also based in Manhattan, and he, he has been putting out, he has, so he has been putting out like studies that he's done research he's gathered during this crisis because he was sick and he was in quarantine weeks ago because he had COVID. And so what he did was he started talking to CEOs and executives that were on his client list to gather data about how people were responding and what they were dealing with things. And in doing so got a really great understanding of the different ways that people are responding and whether or not his original intention was to gather the research, right. it, it, that's what it turns into. It turns into actually understanding what people are going through and actually understanding what his clients current or former or potential future may need because he's been in conversation right. with them. Right. But there's a lot of people who are not doing that. They're almost like, um, the, I forget what the word is when you like pull away from something as opposed to stepping into it. Right, right, and I and I work with a lot of coaches. I, I've had a lot of conversations with other coaches about what you know whether it's okay to to be to be marketing in this environment. And I'm like, well, like it, it, it it's all about serving. And and so like, why would you stop? Like, why why would you stop sharing your gifts? Like, and not that anything is normal right now. Right. But but to the extent that we can can at least make people feel some sense of certainty and some sense of stability, that's that's serving that, you know, it's like if, if, if all of us in, in business just stop doing business, not only will we go out of business, but but we're we're just we're just we're just adding to that that notion that that. Everything is unstable. Yeah. You yeah. Know, so it's, 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 it's controlling that which we can control, influencing that which we can influence, and creating some semblance of, of normalcy amidst this sea of cuckoo-ness. Well, and I think that I, so my experience has been, I'm not saying this is the truth, but my experience has been that if you are in a service-based industry, right? So you are a coach, you are um, social media marketing, you are that sort of in that space. And the smaller you are, the easier it is to step into the mindset of service. The easier it is to shift that messaging, to shift that way of showing up. The larger, you know, some of the larger organizations that I work with, especially if they're more product-based, especially like depending what they're doing, that is a much bigger struggle for even if the executives are there, it doesn't necessarily filter down as well. And, you know, I'm curious because while we are all leaders ourselves, regardless of title, there are different responsibilities in different sizes of organizations and different industries. So how do you have any thoughts around how people can manage that or what they can do inside of you know organizations or situations like that. Yeah. Well, I think I can take this a couple of different different ways. But I but I would say the leaders that I coach, um, you know, some of them are are C suite in some very big companies. Um, they're really having to to pivot in terms of how they're how they're focused on keeping the business running, which is to devote a lot more time um, building trust, communicating more openly, honestly, sharing fears and concerns, um, really understanding what people's fears are, um, the, helping normalize some of these things that are just different ways of doing business, mm -hmm. virtual virtual teams, things things of that nature. So keeping the, keeping the engine running to the extent that, you know, that, if they're in a, a product business, you know, if there's, if their supply chain, if they're affected, you know, then there's all sorts of disruption. But if it's actually, if they're still selling in this environment, a lot of my clients do, or like an online, you know, retail that's still, still working. I mean, they're not experiencing the financial hit just yet. Um, but it's really about um, helping people adjust, 
helping their teams, helping their uh, adjust to a different way of doing business. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I say empathy is the, probably the most important skill right now for any leader to step into because like things are going to, things are going to get better at some point, your team members, your staff, they're going to remember you as that leader who cared a great deal about how they were adjusting to having their kids homeschooling now and, and all their, their anxiety, um, they're going to remember that leader and be loyal to that leader versus the leader who's like, I don't want to hear about anything that's going on. I don't care that you're, you're worried about your parents being sick, whatever. Just head down. We have a job to do. Right. Nobody is going to work well under that environment and it's not going to create loyalty. So I don't know if I answered your question, but it's been on my mind a lot that, that I think that the companies that are going to be successful coming out of this are going to be the ones that, that really engaged their employees and help to sway a lot of their anxiety and fear. And, um, and my clients right now are um, pivoting in, in terms of how they're rolling up their sleeves and getting more involved in the work themselves. Um, so it's that opportunity of really understanding more sort of what people's day to day is, um, being decisive in terms of how they make decisions, being open and honest and um, with a great deal of empathy, humility and, and self-awareness. You know, it's like nobody has all the answers, but um, you know, but I'm ever optimistic that we'll get through it and, you know, and some good things will come out of this. We're going to learn some different ways of how to treat each other in the workplace and, and uh, how, to, how to get things done and not burn out our staff. The number one thing that I'm seeing, though, among the all is just the incredible level of stress that's coming from just constant, like, because they're home, everybody thinks they're or seven, so they're stressed out because it's constant meetings and just constant, you know, how many, you know, Zoom burnout is kind of happening. So, so leaders need to be mindful of that and create new norms around like it's okay to unplug for two hours and be yeah. love your kids, you know, go take a walk if you can, you know, take a shower and <laughs> make sure you, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I think that's a really important thing. It's it's interesting. So I have, um, you know, I've done, I've spoken and done a lot of work around remote work just simply because I was involved in teams doing it 17 years ago, which was a whole different ball game of remote work at that point. So I, I talk a lot about it a lot. And the one thing that I keep seeing coming up, and I love what you've spoken about, because what I keep seeing coming out is the tech side of things. This is how this is how you use Zoom. This is why it's important to move to this platform. This is why it's important to do that. It's very tech oriented. And I'm actually doing a webinar. It'll be way after, it'll be way before this comes out around the leadership when it comes to remote workplaces, because you can't, the, the misconception is that you can take what you were doing at, um, at work and apply it into a home position. And it's just going to magically work. And it doesn't, that's not true. That's not real. Right? right. So I love what you're talking about, which is the awareness to shift it. Yeah. And we have to make it normal for people to like that their that their kids are like jumping on their lap during a business call. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like it's, that's a whole new a whole new way of interacting. Yeah, it really is. And and I appreciate that. I think it's a really important I think it's a really important thing to to mention. Um I do so I do want to be mindful of time. Um and I want to thank you for coming and speaking to me, but also ask you, is there anything before we sign off and before we wrap this up that you want to let, leave people with or something you want to sort of summarize for people who might be watching or listening to this? Yeah. So so I think that this is an incredible moment for leaders to really step up and step in to what I call adaptive leadership. Yeah. I think in addition to empathy, flexibility is probably going to be one of the greatest strengths that's going to help us get through this. Totally. And, and I think that in order to be a really effective leader during times like this, self-leadership has to be first and foremost. So we need to be working on ourselves every day um, to uh, make sure that we're not projecting things onto our team members, to our staff, to our customers, to our clients. So whatever it takes, whether it's just a couple of, hour, uh, couple of hours, a couple of minutes a day of centering, um, watching what we put into our bodies, making sure that we're 
um, uh, we're, we're being creative. Uh, the other day I walked my dog and I just, I just let out a huge primal scream, <laughs> scream in the middle of the street. Uh, whatever we need to do to just like keep our energy moving um, is going to really pay back big time. I think that's a, I think that's a, the best place we could possibly leave it because I, I could not agree more. And I think it's a powerful reminder to wrap this up that it starts with self-leadership. And it's the first thing that most people neglect when they are focused on everything else in a time like this. So that's perfect. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me and to, to come on and have this discussion. It's been lovely. Thank you. Thanks for listening to us talk around leadership in challenging times. If you would like to learn more about us or any of our guests, you can find us online at www.leadingthroughcrisis.ca. If you like the show, please subscribe and leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts from.